Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'll show you how I made this balustrade style coffee table. A couple features of this table are turn legs from Carolina Leg Company, a super high glossy polyurethane top, and a bottom shelf that's attached to allow for wood movement over time. If you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on any upcoming videos. And with that said, let's get into how I made this table. So starting off with this table, the first thing that I did was to mill up and cut all of the apron pieces to length. And I'm using a yellow pine board that I previously milled up to the dimensions of a 2x4. So basically I made my own 2x4. If you want to follow along and do exactly what I am, you could just use a regular 2x4 for this. After I had the pieces of the aprons cross cut to length, I ripped them right down the middle using my table saw. So I have four apron pieces and then after I rip them I would end up with eight. I could tell you that I just used magic to turn four boards into eight boards but since this channel is about honesty I figured I would show you how I ripped them in half. So after I had the apron pieces to the proper length I used the Craig K4 jig to drill pocket holes on each one. These pocket holes would allow me to put a screw from the apron piece into the leg. If you're interested in this Craig jig, you can find a link to that in the description, as well as all the other tools that I used in the video. So here's a look at the legs that I used for this table. These are from Carolina Leg Company, and this is how you receive them out of the box, so nothing needs done. They are pretty much ready to go out of the package. So I line everything up in order to put the apron pieces down. So I'm using some scrap 3 quarter inch appearance board to keep the apron a little bit higher. I wanted the apron to be recessed back within the legs a little bit to give it a better overall stance and make the table frame a little bit more aesthetic. So I put a little bit of glue on each of the legs and then I clamped across them using bar clamps. Usually I get glue everywhere during this step. So the most improved award during this build goes to the fact that I actually got the glue where it was supposed to go rather than all over everything else. So I just put regular construction screws into the legs. I believe I'm using three inch screws here. You could use pocket hole screws, but regular screws are cheaper and they seem to work fine, at least in my case. So once you get to this step, it's a good time to clean off any of the edges or the glue lines you may have missed. Any of the glue that's not cleaned up will show through if you end up staining the table, so be sure to clean those up now. So the smaller pieces of the apron that we cut earlier will be used for the side apron pieces. So basically we make this side the same exact way as we did the other way, only this is standing up rather than laying down. Here's a really great shot of my arm getting in the way of what we're trying to see, but if you use your imagination it will look exactly like it does on the other side, which can be seen here. Now you'll notice here that the pocket holes are facing upward on all of these pieces that I put in. So the top will be covered by the table top and the bottom will be covered by a shelf so those pocket holes will never be seen. If it's possible, I always try to hide the pocket holes as I feel like this actually makes the piece of furniture you're building look more complete rather than have empty gaps or pocket holes seen from the finished product. One thing that I like about these legs from Carolina Leg Company is that there's plenty of room and there's plenty of wood to work with, so the bases of the legs are thick and you should have no trouble clamping across and putting a screw in there. I wanted a center brace across the tabletop and the bottom for a little bit more support, so I measured across and then I cut another board that length and then I secured them using pocket holes. Now this worked fine on the bottom, but putting this on in the top, this is where I went wrong. So in order to make this the most suspenseful coffee table video you've seen all day, I won't tell you why I went wrong just yet, but you'll see that shortly. So for the bottom shelf, I used this project panel. Now I already had this laying around. I kind of just wanted to get it out of the way, so I figured that it would be perfect for this. So in order for it to fit down on top of the shelf, I put the table on top of it, traced the outline of the legs, and then I would cut these out with the jigsaw. So cutting these notches out would allow me to pop the shelf down inside the table. Then I could trace the outline or the underline of each apron piece and then cut that off as well. So to get a flat edge on all of these corner square pieces, I chose the jigsaw. Now you could do this with a table saw too, or even a hand saw. It's faster for me to use the jigsaw, so that's what I did. 
So I know you've been anxiously awaiting when I said I messed up earlier, so here's what happened. I thought I was being clever by not putting one of the side top aprons in. That way I could just pop the shelf in. Well, it turns out that the middle apron piece wouldn't allow the shelf to go in. So that's where I messed up by putting that piece in now. So one thing I can't stand is undoing work I've already done and then having to redo it. But I really didn't have any other option at this point. So I took the middle piece back out and then tried to put the shelf in. Once I got it below the side aprons, it still didn't fit. So when I originally traced the lines to cut out with the jigsaw, I tried to cut perfectly on those lines to make it fit exactly. I should have known better, but it was way too tight of a fit. So I took the shelf back out and then sanded each of the edges down. So I put the shelf back inside the table and then with a little influence from a hammer, the third time was a charm. I didn't want to try to force the shelf down because I was afraid it may break since the project panel is multiple pieces glued together. So similarly to how I marked the leg corners earlier, I traced the outline of the apron on the shelf on each side, which would give me an exact overlap. I figured this would be about impossible to measure, so I figured that it would be easier to do this way. Once again, I removed the shelf from the inside of the table. Hopefully this would be the last time. And then I flush cut each end right on the line using my track saw. So this would give me a perfectly straight line. And this was a pretty easy way to make sure that the cuts were exactly on the line in order for the shelf to sit flush with inside the table. So at this point, I decided to sand the shelf and get it ready for paint. Since the shelf would be attached separately to allow for wood movement, I decided to paint it before I actually attached it into the table. So here I'm using my router with a slot cutter to cut slots for the Z-clips, which would slide into the apron and then connect to the shelf with screws. So we'll take a closer look at that here in a second, but this slot cutter works really well for cutting out the slots for the Z-clips to go in. So I planned out the painting process of this table probably as poorly as possible. I wanted to paint the bottom of the frame first so when the shelf sat in the table there would be no hard lines or missed paint spots from where there was an overlap. So I painted the table frame, then I painted the shelf, then the shelf would be attached, and then I would go back and give it another coat of paint. I used two coats of primer and two coats of paint overall, but you'll see more on that later. So I popped the shelf back in and then I flipped the table over to access the slots that were cut out for the Z-clips and then the Z-clips can be put in the slots. These Z-clips will allow for wood movement over time as the shelf and the frame expands and contracts and they're one of my favorite ways to allow for expansion and contraction when putting in a tabletop or a shelf. They fit in a little tighter than I hoped for, probably where the primer got in the slot, so I did have to tap them with a hammer. Then after that, they can just be attached with a screw into the shelf. Next, I was able to put the middle and the side top apron pieces back in, so I used pocket holes just as I did before, and then finally the frame would be complete. So there was a lot of taking the shelf out, putting the shelf in, taking it back out to recut it, putting it back in and taking it back out to remeasure and paint several times. That's one thing that wasn't the most efficient process of building this table, but it was definitely a learning process and something I'll try to plan out better for next time and for upcoming builds. So I taped over each Z-clip in case they ever needed to be taken out just to keep them cleaner. And then I painted with another coat of primer and then two coats of white paint. I like to use multiple coats of paint whenever I paint something, that way you just get a cleaner and smoother finish and you're less likely to miss any spots. I'm using a Homerite Super Finish Max paint sprayer. This has by far been one of my best investments that saves me time, effort, and also a lot of frustration with getting a good finish using paint. So with the frame painted, it would be finished up and it was time to make the table top. So I made the table top from two yellow pine 2 by 8 by 8s and I first planed them down to get a good surface on each side. They're planed several more times than what you see here, but to keep the video from becoming boring, we'll skip some of the multiple passes of planing. After the surfaces of the top boards were planed, I cross cut them directly in half, which would be roughly to the length that they were. I would later flush cut these to length, but we'll get to that later in the video. But for now, the boards can just be cut to as close to equal length as possible. So when joining the tabletop boards together, it helps to have as flat of a surface as possible on one edge. That way you'll have a better surface to work with whenever you glue the boards together. <laughs> 
Now I don't have a joiner and I haven't gotten the best results using a table saw for this in the past. So I use my track saw as a joiner and I usually get close to a perfect edge on one side of the board. Once I have a straight edge from the track saw, I'll put that edge against the fence of my table saw and then rip the other side flat using the table saw. While not perfect, this gives me a pretty good edge on the other side of the board and this way all of the boards are the same exact width. In case you hadn't noticed, a weight bench is a great place to rest the boards that you finished cutting in order to get them ready for the next step. If you guessed that the next step was gluing the tabletop boards together, you would be correct. So I first put these three bar clamps out and then I placed the tabletop boards on the top of the bar clamps. Then I'll flip them up and I'll add glue to one joint of all of the boards. In several of my previous videos, you may have seen me use dowels for alignment at this point. And I know a lot of people will use biscuit joints or dominoes to keep the board straight and together. That's fine, but I found out that if you have a straight edge and a good joint, you really don't need to use anything to align the boards. If you clamp across them well, they'll line up perfectly and glue is strong enough to keep them together. So at this step, the bar clamps aren't exactly tight yet, but the boards that I'm clamping across the top, I will tighten the clamps as much as possible to make sure that everything is clamped downward, which will straighten the boards across the table. So if the workbench you're using is flat, when you clamp down on top of the table, it'll make sure that your tabletop glues flat as well. After those support beams are glued down, you can then tighten up the bar clamps to make sure that the boards will glue tightly together as they dry. I usually let the glue dry with the clamps on until the next day and then all the clamps can be removed. I used about every clamp I had here, so yes, I am taking donations for clamps. However, if you donate your clamps to me, you probably won't have enough clamps for your tabletop, so I wouldn't recommend that you donate them. After the tabletop is finally together, I like to hand plane the surface to make sure that I don't have any large edges. I think hand planing is fun, so I don't mind this extra step at all. You could skip this step and go straight into sanding, but the smoother your surface is to begin with, the less sanding you have to do. And since we all agree that sanding is so much fun, maybe using the hand plane isn't such a bad idea after all. Pretty ironic that I just bashed sanding and now sanding is the next frame of this video, but at this point I did sand everything down on the top roughly to get the surfaces a little more smooth and get them ready for the flush cut and the router trim on the edges. So here's the flush cut I just mentioned. So I used my track saw to flush cut the edges of the tabletop flat to where they were all equal to each other. If you don't have a track saw, you definitely could use the circular saw for this. I just happen to be pretty bad with the circular saw, so I use the track saw instead to get a perfectly flush edge on the tabletop boards. Once the tabletop was in its final dimension and shape of a tabletop, I used a roundover bit in my router to cut an edge and add some detail on the tabletop. This step is definitely optional, but I think that adding an edged profile to the tabletop really sets it off and makes it look like a tabletop rather than just some boards together. I'll usually opt for a roundover bit or a chamfer bit whenever I'm finishing my tabletops. So at this point, the tabletop was basically finished other than for sanding. Now, one thing that I've noticed in the past is a lot of times when you use pine boards, there will be some cracks or some gap in the boards. Now in this board in particular, there was a hole about the size of the Grand Canyon, so I tried to fill this in with Starbond. So I'm still in the learning process of getting it perfect, but all you really do is miss the activator with the glue itself, which cures and dries almost instantly, and it forms a hard surface which fills up the hole and prevents any holes or gaps in the finished product. So like I said, I'm still learning all the little tricks to getting a perfect finish with this, but it does work very well for filling in holes and gaps on a tabletop. After it dries, which usually it's cured within less than a minute or so, you can just sand right over top of the Starmon, and then it leaves a pretty smooth finish overall, and it blends in very well with what the natural look of the knot might be. So after the Starbond was sanded, it was time to sand some more. I took the top to 220, and have I mentioned how much I dislike sanding? I don't even like watching myself sand while making this video. It's like sanding twice, even though sitting in a chair doing a voiceover is much better than sanding. It still brings back all the bad memories of sanding. All right, getting off topic. So I sanded the top surface with the Rotex sander, and then I went over all the edges and the sharp points with my orbital sander. The Rotex is a little too aggressive for that. 
so I use the orbital sander for those. So I use Minwax Jacobean to stain this with. I chose this stain because I wanted a rich, dark color. And I'm staining the underside of the table first to see how the stain looks on the wood and to see how easy the stain is to work with. This stain ended up being pretty easy to work with and it blended overall pretty well. A couple tips while staining is to always go with the grain and try to spread the stain out evenly, like you can see how I'm doing right here. Try to avoid leaving any hard marks or blotchy spots on the stain for an extended period of time because they will show through when the stain is dry. So don't forget to do the edges. I like to do the tabletop first and then after the edges are done I'll go back over gently and make sure everything is smooth and has a nice clean finish before I let the stain dry. I like to let the stain dry for at least 48 hours before I put the finish on. If you can let the stain dry for longer than that, you may have even better results. But I'm using Minwax Gloss Polyurethane here. If you watched my previous videos, you'll know that I use this product frequently. I think it finishes very well, leaves a nice finish once it's dry. I use two coats of the polyurethane. You can use more if desired, but I sanded in between the coats about 24 hours after the first coat was dry, and then I sanded it down with 400 grit sandpaper. After that, I applied another layer, and two layers was enough for the finish that I was going for with this tabletop. Again, don't forget to get those edges because that will leave a better finish overall. As I attach the bottom shelf with Z-clips, I also attach the top in the same way. So I popped the Z-clips into the slots that I had cut out with the slot cutter in my router. And then I was able to attach the table top in this manner. So again, the whole idea behind the Z-clips is to allow for wood movement as the top expands and contracts. I've had good results with Z-clips before. I think they're very sturdy and they're also pretty easy to use. So that's my preference. Once the tabletop is centered in place, you can put screws through the open part of the Z-clip into the tabletop. Just make sure that the screws aren't too long, otherwise they could come through the tabletop, which you definitely don't want at this point in the build. So with the tabletop attached, that would wrap it up for this table, and it was completely finished. Here are some final looks and pictures of how this table turned out. I was really happy with how it turned out altogether. This has actually been one of my favorite builds so far. I really like the profile of the curved legs on this coffee table, and I think everything fits very well together. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned earlier, you can find a link to the dimensions as well as all the tools I used in the description. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe as it really helps my channel. And be sure to stay tuned for more upcoming videos.